are at six this evening. What a piece of genuine television history that was. The very welcome return to Auntie of good old Doctor Who. Back and still terrific the second time around. Would you believe it's close to 40 years now that the old classic British science fiction series has been entertaining viewers around the globe. And in that time, it became cult viewing, not just for kids, but also for a lot of big kids as well. Here's a look back at the wacky world of the slightly mad Doctor through the eyes of one very curious community, all those Doctor Who buffs. Doctor Who started in Australia in 1965, and so we're talking in the beginning. I came from a large family, and uh, after dinner we'd all gather around, you know, one television in those days, the, the black and white box in the corner, watching Doctor Who. You know, we all loved it. You will follow me, both of you. Do not try to escape, or you will be exterminated. It was never frightening to me. It was fascinating and interesting and exciting, but it was never frightening. You know, I didn't sit on the behind the couch. I was too busy sitting on the edge of my seat, lapping it all up. There will be no revolution. Doctor Who was considered children's science fiction. It was created as a children's program in the UK. Interestingly, when it first came out to Australia, it began in an adult time slot at 7.30. You know our ways, you must be destroyed. You can see in the sensor records that several of the close-ups were cut because these were considered too scary. <laughs> Particularly being a, a girl in the 60s, you know, you were considered pretty weird to be a, a science fiction fan. It wasn't until I went to university and there become involved with the uh, University Science Fiction Association. That was the sort of seeds that led to the foundation of the, the Doctor Who fan club. It's fun and even when it was, well, yeah, a few years ago it was cheap and nasty and it was still fun and people just enjoy having a piece of total escapism. <laughs> I know that for many fans, their favourite is Tom Baker. I found that Baker's Doctor tended to be a little bit too slapstick, comedic, even buffoonish. Got it! Lee San Chang. What? The master of magic and mesmerism. Show us a trick. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> Tom Baker, alias Doctor Who, welcome to Australia and to Countdown. Thank you. Now, what does it feel like to be in Australia, considering you travel the universe and you span 500 years? Oh, good. Good. Yes. Sometimes they say Australia's 500 years behind the rest of the world. I mean, what is your assessment of that? Oh, I would have thought it's longer than that. <laughs> Well, my favourite Doctor is William Hartnell. I refer to him sometimes as the Smith's Crisps Doctor because he was the original and best and he was the doctor I grew up with. Colin Baker, I'm afraid, I did not like at all. His doctor was more of a brat. It was a very divisive period in Doctor Who fandom. The Daleks are bastards of Earth. As for favourite monsters, you can't go past the Daleks, though. They were always good. Pop Daleks, who else? And the Daleks used to scare me, too. In a lot of ways, they, they made Doctor Who. The audiences went up immediately. Word got around. It really drew people into watching Doctor Who. I can hear you. I warn you. Resistance is useless. Turn on the Daleks. Turn on the Daleks. Kill the Daleks. A lot of people think the Daleks are robots, but there was actually a Dalek creature, a life form inside it. So, in fact, the creature inside them was supposed to be a, a mutated descendant from a, a human-like life form. 
we were inside these machines as mutations and we operated them so that they glided all over the set and they were very, very evil. Stop, I want you. I'm a curator at the Powerhouse Museum. My day job is curator of space technology, but I've also been able to curate a couple of exhibitions on special effects so that we could create a homage to Doctor Who. Even the people who say they don't like Doctor Who, they've all seen it, haven't they? Now that we see Doctor Who coming back on television, it's going to encourage a whole new generation of fans to really appreciate Doctor Who from its roots. You've got to love those sets. You could never accuse the uh, BBC of throwing money at Doctor Who. But in spite of the B-grade movie look, or maybe because of it, fans like Kerry, they tell me, still charge off to Doctor Who conventions, pour over Doctor Who websites, and engage in their favourite sport, arguing about who was the best Doctor Who. Tom Baker for me by a mile.